Craig Brotman's been in tennis since the age of 13. He was a ranked junior player and college player and started a stringing business at the age of 16, and he's been building it ever since. He has served as a stringer for the U.S. Open, Masters Cup, Sony Erickson, and the NCAAs, um, and countless other events. He's a successful entrepreneur outside tennis and is devoted to personal development and helping people grow. Craig, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, we're going to go into some detail about your businesses, but before we do, I noticed at the bottom of your email, you have a quote that reads, uh, if you want to thrive in today's economy, you must challenge the status quo and get the financial education necessary to succeed by Robert Kioski. Could you talk for a moment about why you have that quote? I'm really big on personal development and, uh, the last probably six, seven years, I've focused on personal development. I think if you grow as a person, um, it's going to really help you with your income. And it, it's made a big difference in my life. Okay. So, uh, well, we'll circle back for, uh, to the personal development part, but let's talk a little bit about your racket customization business. Uh, how did you get started with that? Well, like you mentioned, I played um, – and uh, I saw an opportunity. I met Warren Bosworth years ago uh, when I was working at a tennis shop up in Maryland. And uh, I just loved what he was doing with rackets. And I, you know, just started studying what he was doing. And it was something, I've always been the type that likes to work with my hands and create stuff and build stuff. So uh, from there, I just started tinkering with it and uh, started doing my rackets and a few other players' rackets, and it took off from there. I think it really took off because I had the background. I lived at Nick Boletari's as a junior, so I had the contacts. Okay. Um, now, how did you build up the business? I mean, you said in the beginning you were stringing your own and a couple other folks. I mean, how, how did you get that to grow? Um, when I was at tournaments or when I was, wherever I was, I was always promoting, self-promoting myself, what I was doing, whether it was racket stringing or racket customizing. Um, as far as the customizing lately, the last few years, a lot of the juniors that I grew up with turned out to be, uh, college coaches. So I had that relationship already in place with them. So it was just a matter of following up on those relationships and letting people know what I was doing. Okay. And it, since you've been, you've been really successful with this, it sounds like that you've been very, very good at getting new customers and retaining existing customers. Can you talk a little bit about what maybe you were doing or have done slightly differently than some of your competitors as far as uh, getting new customers and retaining the, the customers you have? I think the big thing I do is I, Follow-up is very important. All the money is in the follow-up, no matter what business you do. And I've made it a point to always do that. Um, and if I meet somebody and then I see them again, I always will, you know, go up to them and make sure they remember where they met me. So, like I said, I'm big on building relationships, and it's so important. And as tennis coaches, we come in contact with so many people. But I don't think tennis coaches leverage that enough. Okay. So, you know, in development, you said follow-up is really important. I mean, and that could mean probably a number of things. I mean, can, can you give some examples? So if you strung my racket or you customized my racket, I, I picked it up at your shop. And I mean, is there a follow-up from that? Or Yeah, I mean, I would, I would send out a text or I would call the, the player and say, you know, it's been a week since you've gotten your racket. You know, how's it working for you? Um, are you having any issues? Um, do you think we need to change anything? I'm just always staying in contact with people. Like now with what we're going through, I'm sending text messages out to people, just asking how they're doing. Just asking how they're doing during this crisis. Wow, so you're really developing some new relationships and keeping the relation, existing ones going, it sounds like. Yeah. 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 Now, I, mean, I think I mean, it's what the same you, thing with marketing, yeah. Kevin. 
I think it's the same thing yeah. with marketing now. The businesses that are going to come out of this are the businesses with people that are in front of people. What I mean is you might not have, you might have a business, but it's not open now because of what we're going through. So you can't market the business, but you can put quality content out there on social media that when we do come back, people will think of your business first. Okay. Does that make um, sense? That does make sense. And what have you found? Yeah. I and mean, what's been, what was challenging or what are some similarities in the challenges you faced in building your racket customization business versus the uh, businesses that you're in now? Well, I think every business has a challenge. Uh, find your niche in that business. Like there's three other companies that are competitors of mine and they basically for the customizing go after the top tier players my focus is going after the lower tier players that still need to work, but can't afford what those other companies are charging. Okay. And as far as, I mean, do you, do you consider, is there a particular personality that would do well in, in that type of business or some that would do better than others or like who's suited to the kind of path that you've taken? Well, I think in any business, you got to be a go-getter. Uh, you got to be driven. Um, and you got to be relentless. And people will tell you I'm relentless. I love, I love people. Um, and I just love learning about people. And if it's successful people, I'm always asking questions. How did you get successful? Just like you're asking me here. I just, that's just what drives me. Yeah. Well, it sounds like, yeah, you're passionate about, you know, relationships and helping yep. people grow. Yep. And uh, now you're, you're actually in business doing, uh, doing that right now. I mean, can you talk a little bit about uh, the personal development end of, of your business? Well, I mean, I, I do personal development every day. I mean, I'm either listening to, uh, people in that field, trying to, trying to listen to positive things every day. It's really hard with what's going on. Uh, my other businesses outside of tennis, one is a residual income. One is a direct sale income. I think every tennis pro, every personal trainer needs another source of income outside of teaching. But what teaching does is it allows us to meet a lot of people and to build those other businesses. And that's how I've so been able to build those other businesses. So if I'm a pro at a club and I'm, yeah. maybe I make a salary and then I, I make uh, my on-court uh, money from teaching, um, and some perhaps from the pro shop, but um, I'm hearing what you're saying. I mean, how, like, walk us through for a moment that kind of thought process. I mean, I, I get it. I mean, you know, I'm getting older, I like to have that additional income or uh, revenue stream? I mean, what is kind of the first step for a pro to explore the possibilities for himself or herself? I mean, there's a ton of opportunities out there in, in, in the home-based business space um, that one could find. I just, when I lost my business at IMG because they had a shakeup years ago, I couldn't replace that income in tennis, in the stringing. I just couldn't. There was no other uh, situation that put me in front of so many people for the stringing and customizing. So what I did is I reached out to people that I knew that were very successful and asked them what I should do. And the majority of them came back and said, find a revenue stream that will pay you around the clock. It's the only way you're going to get ahead. And I lost everything. I got divorced. I wow. lost my business. I mean, I lost everything. And I built those, you know, residual income businesses from the ground floor, but I took the same principles that I used as a tennis player, as a junior, and the same principles I used to build my stringing and customizing business. It's, it's hard. Okay. It's hard. Okay. It's hard work, but being broke is hard. So it comes down to pick your heart. 
And it sounds like you were forced into this because of the shakeup at IMG. Yeah, well, I mean, when that happened, I realized I could not rely on one stream of income anymore. And I could not rely on having my business based in inside of somebody else's business. I mean, it crushed me. I'm not afraid to admit yeah. it. But I knew I built a business once, I could do it again. I just needed to find the right vehicle to drive. Okay, so let's uh, play out a scenario. I'm, I'm a pro at a club, and uh, like I had described, and I've got a number of members. It sounds like uh, following a similar model, you've talked to successful people. Maybe <clears throat> it'd be better, you know, it's good to talk to anybody, of course, but um, the very strongest people might be entrepreneurs themselves. Uh -huh. Right. So in other words, if I, I could talk to somebody who's a partner at a law firm and that's fine, but I'm probably not going to go to law school and become an attorney, let's say, um, or a doctor or something. I yeah. mean, would you suggest that at the top of the list, pros begin talking to uh, entrepreneurs about what they've done? As far as for opportunities or if I was for trying to yeah. talk to them about an opportunity I had? Both. I mean, if you're thinking about maybe, you know, being something uh, more of an entrepreneur, talking to entrepreneurs uh, themselves might be a, a good start. Yep. 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 Um, I would just, you know, if you ask people enough questions, they're going to tell you what they're looking for from a business standpoint. If you're trying to share an opportunity with people, uh, one question I would ask is, Let's, let's take, say I'm talking to a lawyer, you know, and I would say, you know, I know you're successful, but what would be the one thing that you would change if you could change something right now? And a lot of successful people, doctors, lawyers, they make a lot of money, but they have no time. And the one thing we can never get back is time. And that's right. what I typically hear from them is, I want, I want to spend more time. I'm getting older. Great. Do you have a plan B? Typically, most people don't. Uh, let me ask you a question, Kevin. If I had something that might answer these questions for you or solve these problems for you, would you at least take a look at it? Right, of course. I mean, the answer would always right. be yes. Right. And right now with what's going on, I mean, people, people are open to opportunities. And you really need to take a look at opportunities out there because I really think this is a dress rehearsal for what's to come. Working from home, it's going to explode. Would you encourage people to just get started some way? I mean, they say the road, the thousand mile journey starts with one step that it, it's not going to be an overnight success, but if you at least get something started, that's the way well, to go. Even if it's not huge. It wasn't overnight for me. I mean, I failed miserably in the beginning. But what I didn't do is I didn't quit. And most people quit things when it gets hard. It might, you know, you might get into an opportunity and it might not work out. It might not be the right opportunity. But don't get out of that industry because you're making connections along the way. And I'm still communicating with the people I met when I first got into this industry. I might not be doing business with them now, but down the road, their situation might change and they might want to partner up with me on something. So it comes back to the building of the relationships. Well, that, this is all terrific information, Craig, and I, I hope that some pros are able to take it and, you know, begin their journey to, you know, to move in a direction like you have. Um, do you have a uh, contact info you'd like to share with anyone? Yeah. Uh, anybody can just email me at prostringing at macmac.com. So it's prostringing at mac.com. And I'm more than happy. I know leaders in the industry and in several companies and we could have a chat and I can match people up with, you know, something they're looking for. Fantastic. All right, Craig. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Kevin.